Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be continuing to work on Orchid, my water cool gaming PC build. This is where the build is so far and I'm just going to jump straight into working on the front of the case. But before that, let's remove this Activate Windows watermark with today's sponsor, SCD Key. They offer cheap OEM Windows 10 keys, so just head on over there using the link in the description down below. If you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off. The key is delivered immediately and then you can just search for Activate on your PC and input the code there. Click Activate and the watermark is gone. So back to the video. So the first thing that I wanted to do is add some artwork to the front tempo glass panel. My idea here is inspired by the Corsair logo, which is basically stuck in reverse to the inside of the panel, and this gives it a tinted look from the other side. So I thought if I did the same sort of thing with an orchid silhouette using white vinyl, then that should end up matching the Corsair logo quite well. Um, so the orchid logo that I went for is just an Adobe stock image. My vinyl cutter didn't do the greatest job of cutting it, but I'm hoping that you know, once it's applied and you're looking at it through the glass, it'll look good. So the first time that I tried to apply this, I actually got the positioning completely off. So this is actually the second attempt that you're seeing now. Um, but here I did mess up a little at the end and actually had to reapply a bit of it. Um, so because you're looking through the glass at the back of the vinyl, any trap tear or differences in the adhesion to the glass show up and look ugly when light passes through it. But I found that by applying a lot of manual pressure, I did manage to get it to look pretty good and it definitely turned out better than my experiments with glass etching. So for the front intake, I'm going with a Corsair 360mm XR5 radiator. This is only a 30mm thick rad, but seeing as I'm also going to be putting a 240 rad in the roof, um, and this loop only has to cool a CPU and a single GPU, I'm fairly confident that I'll have more than enough radiator space area to manage everything. So if you watched my previous video on this build, you'll have seen that Corsa sent me LL120 fans by mistake, but luckily I was able to return those and get the QL120 fans I wanted to use in the build instead. These are pretty much the ultimate RGB fans, because you can have addressable lighting on both the front and back part of the fans. Um, and the benefit of this is that no matter what way you need to install the fans for optimal airflow, you're still going to be able to see the lighting. I also really like the shiny silver Corsair hub design on these fans, as they'll go really nicely with my chosen water cooling fittings. So I'm fitting these in a push configuration, which means that they'll backlight the orchid on the front glass panel. Fitting the tube res where I wanted it on its bracket, I found that I couldn't install this front radiator assembly into the case. The res's bracket hit into the power supply shroud. However, this is a problem when only actually getting it into the case. Like once it's installed, there is enough space for it to sit lower, and in fact, it does actually need to be lower for the GPU to be able to fit. So what I'll need to do is install the front mount assembly with the res high up and then lower it whilst it's in the case. And this will be fiddly, but thanks to the thumb screws, I should be able to manage it. So in regards to cable management, the pump's cables can run through this bottom grommet and the reservoir's lighting cables through this middle grommet. And I think this looks neat enough. However, the fan cables are a problem, so I decided that I would drill a hole through the white piece of plastic so that I could run them neatly behind the rad and fans out a few, which meant removing the front rad assembly from the case. So I started with a small drill bit and that went well. But then I got overconfident and skipped a few sizes. And this happened. So if you think I'm taking any responsibility for this, you're wrong. This is completely your fault. Yes, you. <laughs> because firstly, okay, you should always have had something under the acrylic to it from snapping. Secondly, you should have applied very little pressure until the drill bit was actually spinning. And thirdly, you should have worked up the drill bit sizes instead of getting overconfident. So just a lot of schoolboy errors, if you ask me, none of which I would have made myself. <laughs> So it's now one month later and the replacement plastic has arrived. I got a sample of spearmint green frost, which is quite nice, and two replacements of the broken part and one replacement of the floor piece, just in case it gets damaged. With a bit of prying with a knife, I was able to remove the floor piece without damaging it. The broken part was a lot more resistant, which is testament to the Gorilla Tape that I'm using. I ended up having to get a hairdryer out 
and that, along with a lot more prying, allowed me to get the two halves out. With the replacement piece installed, the build now looks almost identical to how it looked at the beginning of the video, except it's a month later. <laughs> With the front radiator assembly installed and the res lowered, there's finally some progress. You might be wondering where the fan cables are. No, I didn't try to drill another cable management hole. I literally just followed the front IO cables over the top of the plastic to remove the case. Like I should have done to begin with. It turns out that I didn't need that hole drilled after all. Kill me now. <laughs> So now it's time to work on the roof radiator setup. So I installed two more QL120 fans onto the 240mm radiator in a push configuration. This then went onto the case mount, which I installed initially upside down and then had to flip it around the right way off camera. And with that installed, it was finally time for the exciting bit, designing the loop and running the tubes. So I wanted the first run to go from the roof 240 rad to the front 360 rad. And ideally it would be a clean, stealthy run that's hidden behind the radiator. These chrome fittings look really nice, like Corsair have teamed up with Bits Power on these, and I've always wanted to use Bits Power in a build, but I've never had the money. Like, I don't know if this is a perception that anyone shares, or if it's even still valid because it's been like six years since I did any water cooling, but for me, Bits Power has always been a premium, like, rich people brand. Like, I see them as like a water cooling equivalent of like Rolex or Gucci or something. Um, that's not to say that they're overpriced, because the quality is definitely there to justify them being more expensive than more budget options. It's just when you add up like an entire loop's worth of bits power, the price tag really starts to add up. But I suppose it really does depend on what you want to do with the loop. Like, for this loop, for example, I could have just gone with two four packs of standard compression fittings and used like zero angled rotaries, and that would have been a total fittings cost of £50 for the entire build. It's only when you start adding like 90 and 45 degree rotaries everywhere that it gets expensive. So for this run, I ended up using two 90s and a compression on each side, which means that this single run costs around £62 in fittings, <laughs> but on the plus side, it did turn out exactly how I wanted it. For this next run, I tried using a 45 degree rotary on the radiator side, but I really didn't like how it looked. In the video, it doesn't look that bad, but seeing it like IRL in three dimensional space and being able to look at it from like different angles and stuff, I just wasn't happy with it. So I then tried swapping to a 90 degree rotary instead and this looked better, but I still wasn't happy with it. So I ended up deciding that what this run needed was two 90 degree rotary fittings on the reservoir side. But unfortunately I had one left and my Corsair rep was on holiday, which meant I need to order more myself. Um, but in the meantime, I decided to move on to the run that would go between the radiator and the CPU block. At first, I tried a tube run with node rotaries, and this wasn't bad, but I thought that a 45 on the CPU would improve things and match the style of the other tube runs better. And then this just seemed like a good time to install the Rare QL120 fan, and the RTX 2080 Ti with the Hydro X block installed. So next I replaced the plastic blank on the pump press combo with one of the bits power ones that I bought and then went on to working on the run between the pump and the GPU. So checking the manual for the GPU block reveals that you can choose the direction of flow that you want through the block so it's not like uh, with the CPU block which has like a defined inlet and outlet for optimal performance like you can go, you can go either way. Um, so I ended up using a 45 degree rotary on the GPU side and a 90 degree rotary on the other side. So the very next day my additional 90 degree rotaries arrived, and with their arrival it was time to re-attempt the run from the rad to the res. I tried my double 90 idea, but it didn't really go according to plan. One of the things that I don't like about this XT5 pump res is that it sags. My brain has gotten really used to noticing GPU sag, and then whenever I see a picture which has a build with GPU sag, it just sticks out to me immediately and it's just like a big focus for me. and. Before I even received my XD5, one of the things that I noticed was that in Corsair's own videos and promotional material, that the res wasn't straight, like, and it triggers my GPU sag radar, even though, you know, this isn't a GPU. And I'm always staring at sag in videos, wondering why no one tries to fix it before filming, and now it's my turn to fix it, and I'm not exactly sure how to go about doing it. So as a temporary solution, I've just stuck a rubber, or um, an eraser as you'd say if you're American, in between the GPU block and the res. 
And with that there, I was able to shorten the tube and come to the conclusion that I still didn't like this run. <laughs> Next, I moved on to the run between the CPU and GPU block. And at first, I tried running straight out of the back of the GPU block with a 90, straight into a 90 coming out of the CPU block. However, this didn't work because there wasn't a big enough gap there, like the compression fitting on the GPU side actually made contact with the CPU block, which meant that the part you tightened down couldn't even sit on it properly. So I decided to switch to coming out the front of the GPU instead. But don't worry, I didn't forget to add the blanks to the back of the GPU. Only a complete wally would <laughs> forget to put them on and then start filling the loop. <laughs> um, shade. Shade, okay. <laughs> First, I tried with just a 90 on the GPU side, um, and this is too much of an angle and would have caused the tubing to kink. Next, I tried adding a 45 to the 90 on the GPU side, but the angle was still too great for the tubing to make without kinking. Um, and lastly, I tried adding a 45 to the CPU block, and whilst there was just enough space for the barbs to clear each other, and I could have cut a tube this short, there was nowhere near enough space for the two compression collars. The run shouldn't leak if I just went barb to barb, but you know, I wanted everything to match, so I wasn't going to do that, um, which meant time to buy even more fittings. So firstly, a Bits Power adjustable aqua pipe for the run between the CPU and the GPU, and then secondly, a Bits Power X cross adapter, as I think this will neaten up the run between the res and the front rad. So a couple of days later, the new fittings arrived, and I immediately got to work on the final two tube runs. The aqua pipe was a right nightmare to fit. Like, as you would tighten up one side, the other side would loosen itself. <laughs> it was, it was a nuisance. Um, and I only needed a single millimeter of extension out of it. So that placed the bit that tightens or loosens the extension part right next to the bit that I needed to tighten into the CPU block. Ultimately, it was a right hassle. Um, also, I feel like no one talks about how painful water cooling can be. Like, you can't use tools to tighten anything, and. It all has to be hand tightened, and I absolutely destroyed the skin on my fingers doing this. Eventually, the aqua pipe went on though, and I think it turned out looking great. It is probably my favourite run in the entire build. Next, I added the X cross fitting to the top of the 290s, and this places this run almost perfectly in line. With that said, um, I'm recording this bit of audio like after the fact, so I've had a bit of time to reflect, and I think that what happened with this run is it's. The same as like when you draw a picture and it doesn't look quite right so you just like add some more stuff and it still isn't perfect so you add more stuff and more and more and then you look back at it like where it was when you begun and you realise that it didn't look that bad to begin with, maybe even better than where it ended up. Um, so it, it's, because the thing is, is it's still not 100% perfect and like 100% straight but it looks like I've really really tried and then just not quite pulled it off. Whereas the early attempts look more effortless and therefore like better suited to being imperfect, if that makes sense. But for now, at least I'm making use of the expensive fittings that I bought. <laughs> so at this point, I realised that I needed the second EPS power cable plugged in. Normally, I only use a single cable with my builds, but the 10900K can be really power hungry. And I do plan on playing with some overclocking, so it's best to have the extra power just in case. It was finally time to feel the loop, and I must admit, I was really very nervous. Um, the vast majority of the builds that I've installed water cooling parts in were never actually filled with coolant, like they were just demo builds for case reviews, so I could have been doing it wrong for years and just have never known. Um, I even posted to Twitter asking people to guess where the leak would be, and only a couple of you said that it wouldn't leak at all, which it was really nice hearing that like, most of you had zero faith in my water cooling abilities, especially right before adding water to the loop. Like, <laughs> thank you for the confidence boost, guys. <laughs> you you guys have just been making all the mistakes in this video, haven't you? <laughs> um, so you might be wondering why I still have the mudboard and GPU plugged in, and it was just easier to power the pump from a second power supply than to unplug everything in the build. So I'm using Corsair XL5 coolant, and I end up only needing one bottle to fill the entire loop. I know that you're supposed to film like a fancy montage of the filling process with lots of fancy close-up shots, but I was so worried, I just wanted to focus on filling the loop, so I only had two static cameras set up. Um, the good news, however, is that the loop filled without any leaks at all, so suck it, nerds. <laughs> there were a few large bubbles that needed a little assistance on their journey to the outer realm, and after a day most of the small bubbles were cleared as well. 
so it was now time for a few finishing touches. For the case lighting, I'm using Corsair's Lighting Node Pro. Um, hopefully it's four LED strips will be enough to counteract this case's tinted side panel. As after all, there's no point in having a nice looking build if you can't see it. Um, next, I tackle the two vertical PCI mounts that I didn't use. Honestly, this part of the case looks like it belongs on a much cheaper case. Like, it's definitely a weak point on the Corsair 500D SE, um, which has actually been a pleasure to build in. So I cut down one of the snapped halves acrylic with my mitre saw just to use as a cover plate, which I then just taped in. And lastly, I added the orchid named the Power Supply Shroud in the same white vinyl that was used on the front of the case. And with those finishing touches, the build is complete. And it works. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so much to my incredible patrons for supporting me. And thank you for watching. Also, just like a quick PS. Um, for some reason, I don't know if this is like a sexism thing, but I can't use flexible tubing without having people try to explain to me how a hard line isn't that difficult and that I shouldn't be afraid. Like the immediate assumption is that I'm scared to do it or something. So I thought I'd just end this video by letting you know my plans. Like, I want to make a lot of water cooling content going forward, and it just makes sense to start with flexible tubing, especially when I haven't water cooled in so long, and then I can move on to acrylic or slash PTEG, and then onto glass, and then finally onto metals. Like, I even have an idea for a tubing material that I haven't seen done before, and I think that would be very fun to make. Like, start with like a, a kind of proof of concept video and see if see if that's viable um but yeah if i started this series with like a full copper pipe loop for example then it would be a bit like voyager making it home in the first season of star trek voyager or like them destroying the ring in like the fellowship of the ring like come on guys i'm trying to give myself more, like more room for future content here you know can't just can't just skip straight through the stages and lose out on all that uh, juicy content. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. This is Lauren. Over and out.